Hey, hey everyone, it's your Peacekeeper. A little late getting this video out, but I wanted to go ahead and get it anyway. This is the premium ship review for the Akdia Braskaya Revolutsia. Or for those of us who don't speak Russian, which by the way is still me, the October Revolution. October Revolution began life as the Russian Imperial Navy battleship Gangit, the lead ship of the Gangit class of battleships. Laid down in 1909 and launched in 1911 and formally commissioned in 1915, Gangit weighed in at 24,400 long tons and had a very interesting life. The design was selected after rumors spread about Vickers LTD being selected for the design. This upset many Russians who were upset about their handling of the building of the armored cruiser Rurik. To defuse the situation, an international design contest was held, which saw designs submitted from a multitude of countries, none the least Germany, France, and Great Britain. The winner was the German firm Blom & Voss, but the French government protested that the money they loaned Russia would go to their enemy, Germany, and line their coffers. The Russians bought the design for 250,000 rubles, which I have zero idea how much money that is, and then shelved the design indefinitely. The runner-up, designed by John Brown and Company, which is Great Britain, was selected and revised to meet updated standards. The gun layout was selected as the Russians did not believe that having super-firing turrets, that meaning one turret could fire over the one in front of it, they didn't believe that super-firing turrets were an advantage as they did not think that the turrets could fire one, no one over the other without damaging the lower due to the muzzle blast, taking out the siding hoods that were used to actually aim the turrets. They also believed that by spreading out the magazines and isolating them created better resistance to taking damage and increased survivability of the ship. The design did provide a much less stressed hull due to the lower overall height of the hull, but came with the added complexity of routing steam pipes f around all of these magazine spaces meant that uh, the placement of anti-torpedo boat guns was lower in the hole than desirable, and as a result, they were very wet firing positions. In fact, the U.S. ran into very similar problems with their U.S. standards, trying not, not necessarily because the magazine spaces were in the way, but they put them too low in the gun mounts, and that was part of the, um, the progression of the U.S. standards. In fact, you should go check out my video about that. I'll link that down in the description. In terms of service history, all four of the Gongets were assigned to the Baltic Fleet and used to protect the Gulf of Finland against the German Navy during World War I, who never tried to enter it. Gonget actually had a mutiny breakout when the executive officer refused to feed the crew the traditional meal after receiving fuel. In 1917, all four battleships experienced a true mutiny when the sailors on board heard about the February Revolution in St. Petersburg. After being forced to return to Kronstadt, Gonget was laid up due to lack of manpower. He was renamed to the Aktia Braskaya Revolutsia, or October Revolution, in honor of the successful revolution of Vladimir Lenin and the Bolsheviks to convert Russia to the Soviet Union. Her renaming occurred on, sorry, his renaming occurred on June 27, 1925. He would undergo modernization a year later with additional anti-aircraft, new fire control computers, better fire control range finders, and improved boilers that utilized only fuel oil versus the coal and oil mix that it launched with. During World War II, October Revolution sailed for Kronstadt from Tallinn because of the German invasion of the Soviet Union. While transiting the channel between Leningrad and Kronstadt, October Revolution fired upon German positions. On September 21, 1941, she received three bomb hits from German aircraft that knocked out two turrets. While undergoing repairs on those two turrets, additional anti-aircraft guns were added. While there, she was again hit by bombs dropped by the German Luftwaffe, and once repairs were completed, they added even yet more anti-aircraft. During the Siege of Leningrad and the leningrad Novgorod, Novgorod Offensive in January 1944, he supported Soviet armed forces engaging in the area. In 1944, he received a, a British Type 279 air warning radar from the Lend-Lease program, 
And on July 22nd, he was awarded the Order of the Red Banner, which at the time was the highest award that a unit, meaning a ship and its crew or an army unit, the highest award that they could possibly achieve at the time. At the end of World War II, he entered service as a school battleship to train new crews and was eventually scrapped in 1958. In terms of in-game play style, October Revolution has a few distinct advantages over other Tier 5 battleships. Her bow armor is extremely thick. Let's look at that real quick. Really thick at 125 millimeters, basically 5 inches of belt armor at the lower portion. And as a result, it can successfully bounce Yamato shells while angled in. Her gunnery is also quite good, as well as having usable dispersion and pretty good shell damage with both AP and HE. The HE is also really good at starting fires. While not the original intent of this ship, her uh, his anti-aircraft is quite capable, but there are other battleships at this tier that definitely outpace it, most notably, of course, Texas, which has absolutely brutal AA at this tier. He has the weakest hit point pool of any tier 5 battleship and has limited damage control parties. Yes, you heard that right. Limited damage control parties. That's these guys here. That's your instant repair of flood and heals. It is currently limited to just four, I believe, with premium. If you have superintendent. Ooh. Yeah, if you have superintendent, it jumps up to five. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when we get to captain builds for this. Since the Russian line does not have any uh, battleship captains, we'll go ahead and talk about that a little bit. Overall, a very strong Tier 5 battleship and quite possibly a Tier 5 Imperator Nikolai. And that's kind of interesting, too, for a number of different reasons. Most notably, of course, is that Imperator Nikolai, that whole class of battleships, was actually two whole classes after the Gauntlet class of battleships were. So, eh, Wargaming's kind of messing with some things. <laughs> this is a fully moder modernized October... Skya, uh, I screwed it up. We're not even going to try it again. Let's talk about some stats. Uh, 42,500 hit points. Again, this is going to be the weakest of all of the Tier 5 battleships. Weaker than even the Iron Duke, I think. You're, yeah, the Iron Duke for the Royal Navy line. However, it is just covered in armor. Up to 305 millimeters of belt armor. Yeah, it's not belt armor. That's turret. Rear of the turrets. <laughs> The rear of the turrets actually has more armor than the front of the turrets. Someone explain that one to me. Uh, a pretty healthy belt armor. You know, again, not the strongest in the world, so sailing broadside isn't going to save you from the, you know, eventual citadel hits. But it does have a pretty... You know, it has a turtleback armor scheme with the citadel that sits at the top of the waterline. However, uh, these inner strakes on the uh, turtleback are not angled enough to successfully auto mount shells coming in, you know, from the side. So sailing broadside, if shells do plunge at all and they manage to make it through the outer belt and the inner belt, the, you know, the turtle back portion, which it shouldn't really struggle too much. If you're close enough, you will receive Citadel hits. Uh, torpedo damage reduction of 13%, which is quite frankly garbage. So this thing will take a lot of damage from torpedoes. Thankfully, it's at least relatively maneuverable. We'll cover that in a little bit. Main battery consists of four triple 305 millimeter 52 caliber model 1907 guns. That's a lot of verbiage to basically say they're 12 inch guns. There are 12 of them. So 12, 12 inch guns. They have a 32 second reload speed, 212 meter dispersion, max AP shell damage of 8600. The max HE shell damage of 4,500, that's assuming you get a Citadel with it, and 33% fire chance. 16.8 kilometer main battery firing range. The secondary battery does consist of 10 single 120 millimeter guns. They are mounted in really rather awkward positions. Uh, they're really not something that I would write home about. Basically, uh, you've got three up front and then two facing the rear. On each side, so five five on each side total, and their range goes out to 4.4 kilometers. Not not specced into secondaries at all. Any aircraft defense? While this no, this list looks really impressive. 
Uh, and, and in, in a lot of respects, it is impressive compared to other tier five, you know, tech tree battleships. It's really not that much to write home about. I, I would consider it to be just above average, maybe comparable to the New York in terms of overall, uh, any aircraft capability. So we'll start all the way down here with the 76 millimeter. We have two dual 76 millimeters and there they are. The other one's mounted on the other side of the, the stern. We have another, uh, sorry, a, a another dual, but shorter barrels, and another 76 millimeter this time, even shorter barrels, and there's six of those. We have one quad 37 millimeter, which is all the way up here up front. We have 16 single 37 millimeters. There you can see them there, and then we have two quad 12.7 millimeter Vicas, which there they are. Those look kind of familiar if you're, you know, British Battleship player. And then we have the 12.7 DSHKs, which I think those are still in use, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on that. Anyway, your AA bubble kind of hovers around the 3.5K range, and then, it, it, you know, it steps down from there quite rapidly. Overall, most of the DPS seems to be concentrated in these 37 millimeters. Uh, 3.2 kilometers there, and then the DSHKs. But the, your other one's not really contributing a whole lot of DPS. That's why I said AA on this is, is it, it's good, but it's not, you know, it's not the most, it's not the best. We'll go with that. Max speed of 23 knots, turning circle radius of 630 meters, rudder shift time of 12.6 seconds. Concealment range by sea of 13.3 kilometers. That is going to be without concealment expert. So that's its base uh, concealment. 9.8 kilometers by air. We don't care about assured acquisition. There are two uh, camouflages that go with this. Of course, we have our glorious CCCP camo. Tavares, this is best camo. And then we have the uh, more traditional... I guess you could call it traditional. This is what the Russians would have had on it, actually. <laughs> I don't know where this camo came from, but I have a feeling it was designed to rival the uh, Texas's America, America camo. All right, so let's talk about our upgrades. So the main battery mod one is going to be my choice here. The reasons for this, well... I, I, there's the, the AA really is enough of a strong suit to ever really spec into like aug picking up auxiliary armaments mod one. I would much rather not have my guns get taken out. And unfortunately due to the, you know, the armor on these things only being eight inches thick, six on the roof, uh, just not, they, they, they have a tendency to get taken out, especially if they take direct shell hits. So for me, main armaments mod one for the 20% reduction in the main battery and being incapacitated, 15% increase in its survivability, which is its hit point pool, and 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair them. In the second slot, I'm taping aiming systems mod 1 for the 7% reduction in the dispersion of the main battery. Uh, we don't care about torpedo tubes. The secondary battery plus 5% to its firing range and minus 5% to its dispersion. It's a nice added bonus there. If you really, 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 really hate air aircraft carriers, you can pick up AA Guns Mod 2 to add 20% to its main battery firing range. Or if you want to take your really bad secondaries and kind of sort of make them work a little bit better, you could take Secondary Battery Mod 2 for the plus 20% to the main battery firing range and minus 20% to the dispersion of them. In the last slot, I am taking Damage Control Systems Mod 1 for the minus 3% chance of flooding when being hit by torpedoes and the minus 5% to the risk of being set on fire. So those are those. Let's talk briefly about captain skills. Um, this ship really has some strong suits in the brawling role. I, I would even go as far as to say that the... Germans at this tier don't really hold the strongest of uh, brawling capabilities, so October Revolution would definitely fit that bill, and as such, I would highly recommend, you know, specking into that. And with that comes, I'm running preventative maintenance for the 30% reduction in the incapacitation of modules, expert marksman to increase our main tra traverse speed, superintendent for the additional consumable slot, and fire prevention for the more or less the reduction of the number of places that the ship can be set on fire. And this is going to drop that from four sources down to three. 
basically combining those middle two. Th those are my recommended skills for the first 10 points. From there, you could take a number of different options. Uh, from here, I would probably recommend picking up, um, I would say, basic firing training and advanced firing training. That will get your AA buffed out there. And or you could pick up vigilance if torpedoes are your thing. And, you know, that wouldn't be a bad idea either. You got a whole number of different options that you could take. And then um, I would definitely write not expert rear gunner adrenaline rush as your last two points there. Uh, you, you could pick any number of different builds with this. I probably, as you can see, I'm starting to build it out like I would play my Yamato. Uh, same basic build premise, except for different reasons for getting there. The ship's more of a brawler, so I want to buff its capabilities while brawling. Not so much for the, you know, sitting bow on and plinking at ships thing. Okay, so that's, that's that. The only other thing, like I said, is we do have a limited damage control party. Uh, you know, you get three of them by default if you're running just the regular consumable. Four if you add in superintendent. Five if you throw in premium consumables. And I would highly recommend at a minimum running premium consumables if you don't run the um, superintendent on the captain. All right, so that's enough of me blabbing about this thing in port. Let's go look at it in a battle video. All right, so this is going to be a tier six fight on the map Ring. And this is a this is a fantastic map. This reminds me of it's not Big Race. Oh, I can't think of the name of the map off the top of my head. New Dawn? No. Yeah, New Dawn. Uh, same basic principle on the map, except for the capture points are arranged differently. Instead of having three from the northwest corner to the southeast corner, we have two, and then obviously the two base caps. These islands in the middle make it a lot of fun to kind of just battle around the middle. And of course, this map encourages a lot of close in action, which is part of the reason why I like this map. And the map tends to play pretty solidly. You can see here we got K-Bomb and Moon Puma, who is our resident Russian in STW. And he is in his Imperator Nikolai. So we've got ourselves, you know, uh, basically a Russian battleship lineage here. We must most definitely balance out the game, and we must harass ourselves. Our fellow October Revolution, we must harass them greatly. They should come join us, because otherwise we have to put them to bottom of ocean. Not enough vodka to go around otherwise. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and head over here towards D, and that part of the reason why is because, well... Seems like everybody else wants to go to A, and it would make sense to go to A, but there's a distinct issue that I have with leaving a flank completely open on any map. It just doesn't seem like there's enough people to ever fully... I, people just don't push far enough and fast enough. So we just did 14,000 to that Budioni there. And I don't think he's terribly appreciative of that fact because, uh, well, y you know, look at him. He he's got to be, he's got to be very upset. And okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn around. Got ourselves Congo. That would be K-Bomb coming in. But as you can see, 14,000 damage right off the bat in the first salvo. Pretty much a blind salvo, nonetheless, you know, too, because... Uh, we fired it over the um, over the island there. So one thing that this ship will definitely teach you is discipline with your damage control parties. If you are one of those people who gets one fire and then promptly burns your damage control party, you will run out of these things so fast that you will have absolutely zero protection at the end game. Oh, stationary Cleveland. Yeah, okay, don't threaten me with a good time there, homeboy. I like stationary ships. Okay, he's moving forward a little bit. And there's a Citadel hit on him for 17,000 damage. So we're two salvos into this match, and we're already up to 31,404 damage. And that, uh, that Cleveland is probably wishing he had done other things with his life. <laughs> so now we're searching around for target number three. Okay, Furutaka had managed to disappear. Budioni is behind the island. Nothing else is really in range. 
Now, our whole premise here is to try and stall them as best we possibly can. Goodness gracious, Karnik there just decides that he's going to disappear. We ain't got nothing to shoot at. Dolores, we need something to shoot at. Please, please scout for us. I mean, we have two, two tier six carriers in this match. We should be able to at least do something. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. We can get a kill here. Finish off this Bizioni. It's time to go to Gulag! Down he goes. So there we got our first kill. Well, that would have probably been more damage than that had uh, he had more hit points to actually damage, but he didn't. So, go to Gulag! Yes. Go to the Gulag. Speaking of going to the Gulag, we probably should turn around and help our fellow Russian comrade. Mr. Moon Puma is up there in his Nikolai just kind of chilling. I'm going to do a quick little map scope here to see, you know, roughly where he's at. In case you're wondering what the heck that was, if you tap M real quick, twice, MM like that, it will uh, it will allow you to kind of peek over islands and gauge where they're at. That's probably a bug that uh, Wargaming should fix. And you don't see it see me do it terribly often on these uh, in this game. Uh, it's not a tactic that is really all that useful. Once you get used to aiming at ships just based upon their location relative to their name tag, it really becomes kind of a useless skill in the long run. We are up to 34,392 damage. One kill, five minutes into this match. Not a whole lot of damage for five minutes into a match. However, we've got some work to do yet. Obviously, I wouldn't be picking this video if I didn't think it was worth it. So, kind of scouting around here, trying to get our guns. Oh, can we get the kill? You'll, there's that. That's one thing you will find about this ship is that the gun angles, they're actually really quite good. Uh, I'm not too terribly worried about... Oh, oh, yes! And we got ourselves a second kill. And that is a dead, dead, dead Cleveland. That's the second time I've Citadel to Cleveland in this ship. This, I think, was the third or fourth game I ever played in it. I think the first two games were like 70,000 damage. And one game that was only like 8,000 damage, and that was because I did a really, really strong potato and ran into a whole bunch of torpedoes at the very beginning. Okay, gonna try and sneak some over the island, and there's yet another Citadel for 600 hit points. Oh, we're doing some work here. Now, Furutaka is probably regretting sitting behind that island, especially since he did. I don't think he fully realized that he could be shot at here. Okay, so Fubuki is off to our north. Definitely something to pay attention to. We don't want to, uh, we definitely don't want to, you know, let him get, uh, like that. We don't want those torpedoes coming our way. Now, unfortunately, Mr. Moon Puma, you and I are going to come into collision here, I think. Yeah, maybe not. Well, we're going to avoid torpedoes because dances like drunken ballerina. Oh my! What is this? This is obvious balance issue. We cannot have Imperator Nikolai get detonated so easily. This is unacceptable. So we're going to continue this turn here. Fubuki just launched her torpedo, so we need to get the heck turned around. And unfortunately, we're going to be eating ourselves some some hits here from this Kanek. But what's well, 14,000 damage between friends, right? So we shot down two aircraft right away as they came in. They are doing absolutely nothing now. This is... That's what I was talking about. He, he's within pretty good healthy AA range there. Just trying to get ourselves ducked in to only eat two torpedoes. I say only like that is, you know, beneficial or something. It's not, I promise you. And trying to angle ourselves again. Really not succeeding in angling. We ended up taking a fairly large amount of damage. We do 9,000 back to him. We are up to basically 75,000 damage. Two kills. Points-wise, team is dying fast enough that we are not able to keep up. You know, we lost ourselves a carrier right off the bat, so that means that they have a carrier advantage. I've lost my support because K-Bomb has decided that I am not worth supporting. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, K-Bomb ran off with the other guys, like I probably would have done had I been paying attention. And we eat yet another torpedo in the stern. Things are getting awfully hairy here. Thankfully, the carrier spots this Fubuki. I think he held back. I think he held back, I think, is what, what caused that. And, oh, there's the third middle turret there firing. Okay. 
Eats a pen that does zero damage. Thanks, Wargaming. That's one of the worst features in this game. If I damaged a module, I'd like to know that I damaged said module, even if I didn't incapacitate it. Something to, you know, I don't know, balance out the fact that I'm firing a 12-inch shell at a tin can. Be nice to know what the heck I hit that caused zero damage. Anywho. Okay, so we're coming back around, and these shells, I just, I don't know what to tell you. That dispersion dough. <laughs> Uh, there was a pretty healthy amount of damage there. We hit with 7 out of 12 shells. That's just over 50% accuracy when shooting at the Fubuki. And some of you are probably wondering why I'm shooting at a destroyer in a battleship. Well, for one, I don't have any other real targets to shoot at because their entire team is down south. Two, he's the most likely threat to our Ryojo, who we need to survive. But, we're, hey, we're, we're almost catching up here. And yes, I'm making a mad dash back to our team to try and help them out if I can. Unfortunately, things aren't looking so good. Okay, so we get ourselves a shot out on the Koenig. And... The Koenig. However you wish to say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, an overpen. Not so hot. Well, if we can get this... Uh, Ryojo to send his aircraft back over the Fubuki, I might be able to take him out before he gets any closer to take him out, but, uh, well, yeah. And we end up taking, you know, another normal pen through the stern. This is one downside to the ship is that longer ranges, the... It's not even so much the deck armor, it's just that the very, very ends of the ship, the armor isn't particularly strong, and that's really kind of an annoyance more than it is anything else. Yeah, we took off a pretty healthy amount of damage from that Fubuki, <laughs> didn't we? Uh, 2,700 damage there off of the Koenig. Now it's time to see if we can't finish off the Fubuki. Yeah, carrier's gonna drop torps. Oop, those are looking good. We'll hold and, well, we're reloading, but I would hold and wait and see. No. All right, well, go ahead and give ourselves a spread out that way. And... Yes! That normal pen, though. <laughs> uh, up to 93,878 damage. We got ourselves three kills. Really wish I had better AA. Ooh, New Mexico is trying to get some, some plinks at me. It appears that I am last one alive from our group of three, our division. And, okay, aircraft, come on. Come on, AA, do some right, do some damage. Three and a half K. Yeah, well, this is one of those times. I bet if you buffed all the AA up really high, it probably would be uh, pretty respectable. I think it would probably even rival, you know, I don't, uh, maybe not Texas. I think it would, would definitely get it above the middle of the road line. Not really anything left to shoot at, but we definitely need to go down and support. We've got a Cleveland and an Arizona. Facing off against... Okay, down goes the Arizona. So that means it's a Cleveland facing off against a New Mexico. Yeah, we need to go help him as best we possibly can. And as with all battleships, you know, your turret traverse, you need to make that traverse decision well in advance because it takes forever for these turrets to traverse. Not a whole lot of a reason. We got Fubuki going back there to take out the Koenig. I think he can handle that. We're going to go ahead and press on to try and help our Cleveland as best we possibly can. And part of that is going to be getting ourselves into a position where we can actually engage this New Mexico. Now, New Mexico, 14-inch guns, pretty healthy amount of armor. It is a Tier 6 battleship. And as a result, you know, he can do a pretty healthy amount of damage there. Oh, apparently we can shoot over this island, so we're going to take advantage of that. Go ahead and shoot over. Well, down goes that guy. And under undershot him a little bit here. And we're going to see this come up multiple times here. Not real used to the guns by this point, but uh, should be better used to them. Now, remembering that big, thick bow armor section. Definitely something worth paying attention to, right? Because that big, thick bow armor, we can bounce 
up to 18.1 inch shells. We can actually balance more than that if we are properly angled. I underlet him a little bit there. Two normal pens for 5,600 damage. I really wish this Nicholas would go and hide rather than go and suicide. I don't think we're going to get too lucky on that. If he, if he would actually go and hide, turn around, you know, smoke up or something, I could spot for him. But it would take the pressure off of him. And if I could get this New Mexico killed, we could balance this out a little bit better. But he's not really game for that. So New Mexico turning away from us now. Not enough to stop us from doing about 4,000 damage. That Nicholas is definitely not going to survive this ordeal. Which means we need to probably do some more killing. Quick look at the Cleveland there. Not really presenting a very good profile. Besides, we really need to take out this New Mexico as best we can. Fubuki is up there trying to do some work. Ryojo, I think, is out of aircraft. I don't know what the deal is there. Shot out again on the New Mexico. Looks pretty good. Only does 860 damage. Two normal pens and an over pen. 860 damage. I don't think so, Wargaming. I don't think so. Not, certainly not what the shell ribbons would indicate. We do finally, we did finally get Confederate there, up to 107,810 damage. Ship is balanced, Dvoris, I promise. Okay, so we got dive bombers incoming, and you can see here at this point, I have still have three damage control parties, and that's because fire damage is almost universally repairable, so it's definitely worth that. Oh, two pens and two over pens, 7,000 damage, it's at least a little bit more believable. Continuing to nose in. One, we're trying to avoid Cleveland, too. I don't think we're going to be able to really successfully avoid the aircraft yet. So We're going to have to fix that, uh, that fire, though, as soon as possible, because that fire could definitely take us out of this fight. I'm going to wait just a little bit longer, though, to, before we burn the damage control party for no other reason than... Uh, yes, okay, so there's 8,800 damage. Got ourselves high caliber. Uh, the reason why I waited there was because uh, while the fire, the heal, was actually repairing all that fire damage, it wasn't really changing much in the way of impact. Oh boy, we're about to run out of points. 964, 16 seconds of damage control party. We're still alive. Quick look there to the Cleveland. Are we going to be able to get our, our points up or is something going to die? Shoot, I die, and the game ends. Overall, I do really enjoy the ship. It plays like a really solid brawler, but it has good mid-range capabilities and long-range capabilities at that. 125,907 damage, 3 kills, 3 Citadel hits, 1,288 base XP. We did shoot down 3 aircraft. Woo! No fires in this one. Didn't really use HE at all. No real reason to, but overall... Definitely enjoy the ship. It is quite solid. I would highly recommend purchasing it if you're interested in a Imperator Nikolai clone, but at tier 5. Anyway, I'm your peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.